does my voice sound weird? I'm sick and decided to clone my voice instead of missing out on all of the amazing AI news this week. Today's video is all about robots. First, we have an incredible update from Figure AI, a robot powered by ChatGPT. Now, Figure is able to have full conversations with people utilizing its open AI power for incredible conversation ability. Take a look at this new update video from Figure AI. Hey, Figure One, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate, and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great, can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great, can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. Next, we have a video of the Unitree robot breaking humanoid land speed records. Imagine this thing chasing you. Next, we have a robot from Boston Dynamics, something you've probably seen already, but this one is moving heavy objects with insane precision. Boston Dynamics still seems like it's ahead of the pack in terms of ability. Next, we have a robot trained to navigate tight places. Need a rescue in a cave? Need work done in a tight space? Here's the robot for the job.
What we're looking at next is a robot controller from the Apple Vision Pro. This is straight science fiction. And we have a new robotic startup straight out of a garage in Silicon Valley, like many other legendary companies have started. A true Silicon Valley garage startup in Palo Alto, like a few blocks from HP. <laughs> so what's the state of your robot right now? Because it's two months old, you've been training it to do various things. What, tell me what it can do that you're proud of. <laughs> right now it can stand <laughs> without, without falling over, so that's... That's, we're very proud of that. Um, the goal, you know, the goal is to just iterate on the hardware as, as, as quickly as possible. That's why we got three printers. Um, so this is like V3 of the robot. Um, and yeah, the nice thing about 3D printing it is we can just like make V4 in a couple of days and just finish the design. How long do you think it's gonna be before something like this gets into my house and can, you know, do my clothes and my dishes and <laughs> clean my windows and clean my toilets and all the things we'd want a robot like this to do? Yeah, I mean, I started this because I was worried that this was gonna take too long. And I, I want this to be like now, personally. Like, I, I wanted to have this in my house, so this will be in my house when I can convince my wife to, like, let it be in our house. Yep. Um, yeah, basically, like, we wanted to, like, we wanted to just use this as a test bed to, like, implement some of the recent papers that have come out. So so then the question is, like, how, how quickly can we, you know, implement the UMI paper? Um, you know, TBD. I'm pretty confident. We're, we're pretty smart, so. The cost of building robots is decreasing rapidly. Next, we have something that isn't actually a robot, but it's amazing anyways. This is a fully electric passenger carrying drone. Have you heard of NIO? It's a Chinese electric vehicle company that Elon Musk is actually afraid of. They have already deployed full autonomous robots within their factories. And last, Jan LeCun did an interview with Lex Fridman where he says fully functional autonomous robots are not coming anytime soon. Since we talked about sort of the uh, physical reality, I'd love to ask your vision of the future with, with robots in, in this physical reality. So do you think there'll be uh, millions of humanoid robots walking around soon? Not soon, but it's gonna it's gonna happen. Like the next decade, I think is gonna be really interesting in robots. Like uh, the the emergence of the robotics industry has been in the waiting for you know 10, 20 years without really emerging, other than for like you know kind of pre-programmed behavior and stuff like that. And the main issue is again the Moravec paradox. Like you know how do we get the system to understand how the world works and and kind of you know plan actions? And so we can do it for really specialized tasks. And uh, the way Boston Dynamics goes about it is, you know, basically with a lot of um, handcrafted dynamical models and careful planning in advance, which is very classical robotics with a lot of innovation, a little bit of perception. Um, but it's, it's still not like they can't build a domestic robot, right? You know, we're still some distance away from completely autonomous level five driving. And we're certainly very far away from having uh, you know, level five autonomous driving by a system that can train itself by driving 20 hours like any 17 year old. Until we have world models, systems that can train themselves to uh, understand how the world works, we're not, gonna get, we're not gonna have significant progress in robotics. So a lot of the people working on robotic hardware at the moment are, are betting or banking on the mm -hmm. fact that AI is gonna make sufficient progress towards that. 
and they're hoping to discover a product in it too. There's a yeah. Before you have a really strong world model, there'll be an almost strong world model. People are trying to find a product in a clumsy robot, I suppose, like not a perfectly efficient robot. So there's the factory setting where uh, humanoid robots can help automate some sure. aspects of the factory. I think that's a crazy difficult task because of all the safety required and all this kind of stuff. I think in the home is more interesting. I think you mentioned loading the dishwasher, right? Yeah. Like, I suppose that's one of the main problems you're working on. I mean, there's, you know, uh, cleaning up, yeah. <laughs> cleaning the house, uh, care clearing up the table after a meal, sure. um, washing the, the dishes, you know, all those tasks, you know, cooking. I mean, all the tasks that, you know, in principle could be automated, but are actually incredibly sophisticated, really complicated. But even just basic navigation around an uns a space full of uncertainty. That sort of works. Like you can sort of do this now. <laughs> navigation is fine. Well, navigation in a way that's compelling to us humans is, is, is a different thing. Yeah, it's not going to be, you know, necessarily. I mean, we have demos, actually, because, you know, there is a so-called embodied AI group mm -hmm. at, at FAIR. And, uh, you know, they've been not building their own robots, but using commercial robots. Um, and you can, you can tell a robot dog, like, you know, go to the fridge mm -hmm. and they can actually open the fridge and they can probably pick up a can in the fridge and stuff like that and and bring it to you I, you know so it can navigate it can grab objects as long as it's been trained to recognize them which you know vision systems work pretty well nowadays but it's not like a completely you know general robot that would be you know sophisticated enough to do things like clearing up the dinner table <laughs> yeah to me that's an exciting future uh, of getting humanoid robots, robots in general in the home, more and more, because that gets uh, humans to really directly interact with AI systems in the physical space. And in so doing, it allows us to philosophically, psychologically explore our relationships with robots. It can be really, yeah. really, really interesting. So I hope you make progress on the whole uh, JAPA thing soon. Well, I, I mean, I hope I hope things kind of you know work as uh, as planned. I mean, again, we've been like, kind of working on this idea of self-supervised learning of uh, from video for for ten years, and and you know only made significant progress in the last two or three. After seeing all of these videos, do you agree? 